Hey there, it's Christine. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited you're here because today is the day that I am going to share how I make my tarot mats and stitched, like slow stitched mats and bags and accessories. And um, because I can't make a short video, I'm also going to share um, ooh, a little bit of the my stitching history and some of the projects that I've made over the course of time. And really, I wanted to do this mostly because I like to share it, but also so you can get like kind of an artistic perspective of where I come from. Um, if that doesn't interest you, I'm going to leave a timestamp down below so you can just go right to talking about the mats and how I make them. So one thing I did want to mention is that I have been stitching really since childhood and I'm not saying that because I think you have to have been doing this since childhood at all <laughs> because I think anybody can do this. Um, I only mention it because uh, for me, stitching and what I've been creating with stitching has just been an evolution over time and I used to have make things like I was a stitching artist. I was a costumer. I went to costume design school and all these things um, but just because I love like fabrics and I never really could quite find my like design voice. And then I started realizing that this is, you know, when I was much younger, I started realizing that um, I just really love fabrics and creating and it wasn't necessarily like in my younger person's mind that really translated to clothing, right? Because that's how we're mostly exposed to fabrics. And um, so I, I went on that track for a while in my early 20s and I did like making clothing. In fact, I'm gonna show you some a uh, few pieces that I made. If I still, I know I have at least one piece that I made, um, maybe more, but I will show you that. Um, but it really, for me, if I had known that um, creating stitched art or like fiber art was a thing back then. I might have probably gone down that track with it, but I sort of stumbled upon that on my own and just really my love of vintage things. And um, so in this video, I wanna show you some of the things that I've made and kind of that artistic perspective, but also um, some of the materials that I use because really at the end of the day, stitching, especially the kind of slow stitching that I've been doing lately, um, you don't have to be an expert. In fact, it's kind of nice to have that like um, imperfect take on things. I think the most important thing with like making anything artful from stitching is um, use materials that you're attracted to. And I always use the same type of thing. So I'm gonna leave all my resources that I have been purchasing from lately. Um, I'm going to leave some, show you some ideas of where I get different things. And I think some of it will surprise you because it's so accessible and it's really just kind of making things with whatever you have laying around. Um, yeah, but okay, so like back to my, my stitching journey, um, I wanted to share some of those things with you so you could see kind of like the evolution from clothing to costuming to jewelry. And then now I've just been really working on um, things for myself. You know, I, there was a point when I had um, uh, aspirations to sell things that I made. And um, I, I'll be honest, like it was really tough. Like I, I didn't do very well and it wasn't because people didn't appreciate and love my things. I think it was, um, I just didn't know ever how to price them or really price them to make money because I'm very slow at stitching and I am also very detail oriented. And so um, it never really translated to what you could sell. It was more just like special things that you make, right? So um, that's what I do now. You know, I do my stitching when I'm listening to audiobooks that I have to listen to for school or if as a treat when I've just finished a bunch of pages and I want to just like, you know, kind of get into that like a little bit of a different type of creativity. So that's really what I use it for. And that's not to say that I wouldn't want to make things in my Etsy shop going forward. Maybe I will at some point, but I don't know. I really just kind of do it for the love of doing it. And I'm hoping that you will be inspired to take my method and do it for yourself and create your own really beautiful things using this particular type of stitching. Okay, so 
uh, like I said, I'll leave a timestamp where I start the how-to portion, but um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've made, and hopefully you'll enjoy that too. So thank you so much for everybody that requested this video. I'm excited to share it all with you. Okay, so let's dig in. So I thought I would start up here. I made this triptych, and they were supposed to, these art pieces were supposed to hang horizontally, but um, that didn't really work out for my... Um, order here for my gallery wall. So I hang, I've hung them vertically and um, you can see all the details. So I use a lot of found scraps. These um, words I created with um, like, they're done on a sewing machine, but um, the this one is was like a programmed, I used to have a sewing machine that you could do a programmed uh, line of text but I don't have that sewing machine anymore but this this stuff I actually did just with a piece of scrap and created the words using my sewing machine um, so you can see I have like little bits of found lace and this board here I just covered with regular fabric and then I used kind of a treatment to create an antiqued look um, and then this is another little hobby that I have. I make these French beaded flowers and so I created a French beaded garland that goes along with it. So let me step back and you can kind of see the whole piece. And then it's hung just by this ribbon that I attached to the top. Now the middle piece, the woman, was on a Xerox print printout that on some kind of like, you know, printer fabric, but she has changed color over time. So you can see she's very blue compared to the rest of the piece. And um, it was more of a sepia in the beginning, but um, over time she's just sort of faded to blue, so that's fine. Okay, so now her, uh, this second piece, this was sort of the piece that was supposed to go in the middle, and I used the same kind of like objects and feathers. Um, I think this was like a piece of jewelry, like a Bakelite type of jewelry. I used the same kind of like, um, vintage lace and then I've used different layers of things and I really do this layering a lot in my um, tarot mats and stuff as well but here's more so I do a lot of, like I said I do a lot of layering but it really is all about the materials right so I use a lot of like vintage found things and you can get all these like doilies and bits and pieces I used to get them at garage sales and Goodwill but I, I think they're a little bit harder to find now but I can you can get them on Etsy and again I made this um, French beaded garland and it's been a minute since I did that that was really a hobby I kind of took up in between like 2005 and 2008 um, and I still have all my little beads that I use but I've created these garlands just for these pieces and then the final stitch piece at the bottom is this this is one you've probably seen in my YouTube videos um, a little bit hard to back up on let's see um, yeah you can see more layering so that's really what I do I kind of start with a base you can see the base is this fabric and then I start you know a composition that is you know contains different found laces and app like applique like this little thing was you know just like a little hat millinery type thing and then I've used some like little silk ribbons and you know I create like almost like a 3d type of thing um, with my art pieces, but it kind of, that my um, stitching kind of works the same way where I start with kind of just like a plain base and then I start layering and playing around. So let's take a look at some more things. So in this bag, this garment bag, is a dress that I made for a magazine spread. Um, I, the dress is called Cat's Meow Follies and it was my label at the time was Dolly Bell Atelier. And, you know, I went the extra mile and added even to the garment bag. I handmade the garment bag and, you know, created an experience. Everything about all my work is kind of experiential. Okay, so let me show you the dress. So we'll kind of start with a close up. So I even made the hanger and I created like this little special hanger that the dress is going, you know, was going to live on. And again, this is for a magazine. So I went the extra mile here. But um, so you can see what I did here, it's hard to see on this horizontal, but me, ooh. So you can see it's kind of like a roaring 20s, like flapper style dress. So what I did is 
there I purchased actually a vintage dress and you can see there's like a whole netting situation underneath with these little buttons and I deconstructed the dress and I you know like cut off the bottom and I you know made these little panniers and then I added started adding different lace and found objects and you know this was like millinery pieces that I had and the dress is like Mrs. Havisham like it is literally falling apart you can see how a lot of the um, pieces have kind of degraded over time uh, it's it's extremely fragile and I and I really don't expect it to um, really ever to you know be worn again because you know, like this is vintage silk and it is just, I, I don't have the means to keep it from falling apart. You know, I don't have like temperature control or anything like that, but um, I, you know, it, it is what it is. Like I just kind of enjoy it. And I wanted to show you the back, like there was my little label. Whoops. There's my little label that I made. Um, now this is like 20 years ago, maybe that I made this dress, maybe less. Um, but you can see I used, I had like this vintage, look at it, it's just like falling apart. But it was falling apart when I had it, but it was a little sturdier, but it is just disintegrating on itself. But this, I created like a little bustle and I handmade, you know, all these like lace accents and stuff. And I actually wore this dress, so, but and it was falling apart at the time, but it's even more so now. But you can see like I just kept layering different things and um yeah so this whole back piece is was a dress that was net and then you can see i hand stitched painstakingly you know all my work seems to have that in common where i will kind of bite off a big piece you know and it seems like it's going to take forever and that's part of it like i just like that things i like the slow aspect of it really and I like the quality materials aspect so that's an example of a garment that I made okay so let's take a look at this boudoir doll that I recrafted so this doll I got on Etsy and she was in pieces so if you look really close I added those eyelashes um, because you know her, her face needs a repaint so I'm looking always looking for things that are kind of um, you know like a collector might not want because they're not in good shape right so her arms are kind of splayed out but they weren't she her arms were not attached to her body so my thinking with this piece was I wanted to make during my jewelry making I wanted to make a special stand to display my necklaces so you can see I've hung now this is a, a work that I did in paper so I printed out like a doll face and then I just decorated her with a little dress and so these are like paper panniers a little hot glued lace and bows and yeah there's the there's the back she's just like a little paper doll um but you can see I added, you know, I did a little costume out of fabric. And that's really what I did here. So I made this doll like a little dress. And um, here you can see the little skirt that I created for her. And really what she is, this is a vase that I found at a thrift store. And another like super ugly vase that I found at a thrift store. So I kind of just stacked the vases on top of each other and like super glued it. And then I set this doll into the vase so um she's sitting in there quite secure and then i just glued it in um but the idea was that i you know would use her at i used to have sales and things that um, i would display jewelry and My dog was barking at my reflection in the window. So in case you were wondering what she's barking at, <laughs> I'm going to continue on. I tried to like get her to stop, but she's not quite done yet. So we're going to keep going. So from there, I started to do a lot of pieces that I could show, you know, just the general vibe of my work. And so I started collecting these little half boudoir dolls. You can get these off of like Etsy and stuff. They're like these paper mache, um, bust dolls and they usually have wigs and um, it's hard they're hard to find in like good condition 
um, which is fine because I've sort of always liked the ones that were a little smacked up because they were cheaper and they just kind of added to the whole like Mrs. Havisham vibe that I had going. Um, but you know, they don't have bodies and so you have to make some kind of armature that they can sit in. So this one, I found these little upside down umbrellas at a craft store back in the day and I created a little stand and covered it with this like vintage type tinsel. And then I added a little like bow decoration, but you can just see, I made her little dress. It's like ribbons and a feather. And I put a lot of attention to detail, you know, in the hair and creating like the little outfits and stuff. So this is like a little millinery headpiece. Um, and when it's on the head, like the, the character kind of peeks down at you. <laughs> so let me see if I can get a good angle on it but she's just a kind of a mermaid theme. I made a little skirt out of shells for her and the doily part of the skirt was, um, you know, just some kind of doily vintage fabric that I found. It sort of already had that shape. And a lot of what I do, I'm working with the shape of things that already exist. Like I'm not doing a whole ton of manipulation in terms of what the fabric itself wants to actually do see how the back is like it's not very sexy but I did cover it this tiara so let me back up so the the armature was an actual wired bridal type of thing that a milliner would use to create a bridal headpiece okay so I covered that with tinsel and then I made this big um you know thing on the front which is really let's see so it's just like the the bust is a porcelain doll and then I made her skirt and I added like, you know, different shell details and this big like plume, which you can't see. Let me see if I can get a good look on it. She's sitting in front of a, like a glass glitter starfish. It's, it's hard to see, but I, I took a starfish and you used to be able to get this like hand crushed vintage glass glitter. Um, and I don't know if they still sell it, but I covered a starfish in that vintage glass glitter. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a little mermaid tiara that I made. So one last little, one last little millinery piece. Um, I took this tiny top hat armature and you, again, you can buy these things at like, you know, different fabric stores. It's sort of dusty. Um, and then I covered it with this kind of pink rose ticking fabric and then created, you know, in these kind of vintage pastels, a little plumage. Now these feathers, um, you can find them vintage, especially in LA, there's like a shop that has all that kind of vintage millinery because it's the film industry, right? But you can make them yourself too. There's a way to like curl these feathers just like people do with paper and scissors. They're easy to mess up because <laughs> they're delicate, but you can like bend these feathers like with a pair of scissors and stuff. So um, anyway, I wanted to show you just like this little top hat with the silk millinery, um, little bow detail in back. Got our lighting going. It's sort of a dark and gloomy day here. Um, so this is the best I think I can do. But anyways, okay, so from there, I started getting into smaller pieces. So some of my bigger um, sculptures, like doll sculptures and costumes, you know, they, they were, they're really fun to work on. But I, I, my thinking at the time was just, I really wanted to start working on things that pieces that were a little bit smaller. Um, so at the time I was still trying to sell everything. Um, but it just, it was kind of one of those things where, um, I could never really find the right niche because the people that loved and admired my work weren't necessarily going to wear a necklace like this. So, um, so I just started to just make whatever I wanted and, and I keep all those things. So maybe one day I'll sell them. I'm not sure. But anyway, so this necklace is the whole point of all of my work is using found pieces and creating, um, you know, some kind of whether it's jewelry or a wrist cuff or whatever, from the found pieces. So this piece, um, it has these, let me see if I can get a better view of it, there we go. So this piece has these little resin Victorian hands that I found, and then I created a wire that attaches to this little metal piece. And then I stitched the metal piece on this kind of Chantilly lace 
um, like this Chantilly lace was literally just like a piece of crappy lace that I got in the market in LA, like the sewing district. Um, so it's just like a cotton thing. And I started adding layers and adding little pieces to this. So this is a parrot feather that I found and then some other crow feathers here. Um, so then I found these like little um, metal pieces to add to it. And I created these little rings, you know, and, and this was actually not for wear. This was, um, this was a piece that was going on a larger um, sculptural, sculptural item. So it didn't, like I have it pinned on, like I didn't finish the fastening. Um, but so I created, so like a, it's like a neck piece, right? So I created these little bugs, you know, who are kind of crawling up the neck here. And then I found this little, remember these guys from um, jewelry boxes? So I, I remember having one of those when I was little and I would open the lid of the jewelry box over and over and over again to, to watch her twirl and to hear the little song play. So I found this little, um, just, you know, in a little junk bag. And so I put her there and, you know, added the hands. And so I started to get into jewelry and still with the found objects and kind of layering compositions. Okay, before we dive into the bags and tarot mats and stuff, I wanted to just show you some of like how it evolved into the jewelry. So um, I started making, like this is an example of something that I made that took me a lot less time. So you can see it's just like different layers of vintage, almost like wedding lace. And you can see I did some hand uh, scalloping with different beads. And that was like a vintage porcelain cabochon that I found it. Like you can go to jewelry, um, not market, yeah, like a jewelry market where there's different vendors and you can buy all kinds of supplies and stuff. Um, so this one was just kind of a piece that lays around the base of your neck and almost like a collar type piece. But then I attached this kind of, um, uh, you know, silk ribbon. And, and what I really loved about making this jewelry was the hand stitching part of it. You know, like you can see, I just started layering different pieces and, you know, kind of was really open to whatever the process might turn out. So these were actually... Um, little leaf things that I strung up. For, it's the same beads that um, I use for my French bead flowers. It was the same, but I just stitched them on. Um, so yeah, you can see the whole vibe of it is really just like finding cut pieces and uneven pieces. And, you know, just I kept adding and adding different layers. So there's like a little bit of French ribbon. There's like these were like little uh, vintage sequins that I added a little bead to. And you could see how it would just take a really long time. But I, I would do this, um, you know, just as not as meditation but because I would be listening to like a show or whatever. Um, but just as a form of enjoyment, you know, like just that fine, like, you know, very detail oriented hand stitching and really anything goes like it was kind of like the creative process I didn't have a plan when I would start these pieces I would just dive in so you can see look the back is just literally like a piece of fabric so I cut like a piece of fabric and then just started layering things so the mats are really done in a very similar way but I have a very sp specific technique that I use with the mat so I'll show you that but um but you can see how all of these are like that um I made these cabochons and um I did, that was from 2010, I guess. Um, you know, I used my found objects of little beads and b bits of vintage applique lace. Um, yeah, so let's look at the back. So it, it's literally just like an organza collar piece that I think I got downtown LA. And then I added in all, you know, you, you create a composition as you go. I knew I wanted this piece, this cabochon to be the focal point. Um, and then I just started adding things and, you know, inventing it as I went. And that's really quite how I do my bags. Look, the, the fixture, the closure is just two little rings with a piece of scrappy silk. It's not even nice. Like it's just, 
um, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of got that like Mrs. Havisham look. And, um, you know, I, I like the idea of found, you know, being really attracted to different, don't you always have like the, like the grandma who had a bin or a scrap bin of bits and pieces that were nice, but scraps and you didn't really know what to do with them. That's what this is. You know, they're just like little pieces of cut off lace and, and, you know, little bits of ribbon. And so I actually keep a, a, basket that I'll show you of, um, you know, people send you, like when you order a tarot deck in the mail, people will put a beautiful piece of like twine or, you know, fabric to present it, you know, when you unpackage it. And so I'll keep that little piece of ribbon or whatever. And then eventually it'll probably end up on one of my stitch pieces. Um, okay. So just a couple more. So this one again was, um, just a piece, it was, I think it was like a scrap of a collar from like a vintage type dress. And then I added lace. I added this uh, cotton crochet, cro what's that stuff called? Crochet trim. And then I printed out on fabric from, from my printer at the time. And you can see this one is changing colors as well. Like it was more of a sepia toned. And then I just like ironed it on, you know? This one I think was actually in a magazine as well. It's like a cuff piece, right? So I put a little snap on it like that, and then you can literally just snap it closed. That's it. It's like that, you know? So I want you to like, this is a small piece, but really the tarot mats are just sort of a larger version of this. Now there's some delicate things you can do on a small piece. Um, that is more, won't get lost in the sauce, like on a bigger piece, like a tarot mat. Like I made these little velvet leaves and just hand stitched those on. And you can see there's a couple of different layers of vintage lace here that I hand stitched with, you know, a little bit of ribbon tufting. And then I made her like a little tiara. So all of this happened, you know, I knew I had the girl and I wanted to start with her and I wanted to start with this cuff. And then I just dipped into the scrap bin and added things as I went. So I would say the key to designing something that you, you know, want to stitch is just start with materials that you love. Start with things that are really, like feel nice to you or have some kind of tactile quality that you really like. Um, and just have a little bit, you don't need a ton of stuff. In fact, it's kind of nicer to have less because it sort of forces you to think creatively. Um, and no scrap is too small. Like if I have a piece of vintage lace that came from like a torn up wedding veil or whatever, I save all the little pieces, even if I cut a piece off because I know that at some point it's probably gonna go on a, another piece. So anyway, so it's all about like kind of building up um, and then, you know, I, this one's pretty elaborate. It's hard to kind of tell because I used kind of like a chocolate brown um, ribbon, silk ribbon. And then I made this cabochon uh, with a piece of paper silhouette. Um, you know, and I just had this, this piece of bow, this net, that is literally a, the tiniest, tiniest scrap of net that I that came from that dress that I showed you earlier. Like this was a piece that I found on the floor after I made that dress and I just saved it because it was a vintage net and it has a very particular feeling to it. So I saved it and here she is. Um, but anyway, you can see on the back, like it was just like, you can see the bones are like this organza wedding kind of weird, you know, sequence thing that we've all seen those, right? Like if you go to a thrift store, you, you sometimes find these like tacky mother of the bride dresses, right? That's what it is. It's like that. But then I started adding in like the vintage uh, hand crocheted lace and different beads and just started, you know, making little things that complemented it. And then I have this like metal kind of rosary chain that I stitched and scalloped and you know here's my classic little like rings with the tattered silk ribbon closure and I was doing metal work for a while so I had like a whole stamping kind of situation going on but I don't have any of that equipment anymore um so I'm not really making jewelry but anyway you but the point is you get the idea of what the design process of it you know here this was a little more delicate like this was actually a vintage collar that I purchased and it sort of had like a pale blue it's hard to tell um 
some of my ribbons tend to come over but I so I made this um, I was into metalwork like I said so I made this little cabochon it says Bella Luna on it in the back and then I guess I named her what is she named it's hard to tell I can't tell I carved something into it um, but you know I just layered it sort of a decoupage situation and covered it over but anyway we're getting into territory now that's like off topic but you know I found these little like um, flowers from Venice these hand-blown flowers and I added those so you can just see it's all little scraps of metal and lace and these two rings with a ribbon I mean that was obviously a classic thing I like to do for a closure um, yeah so the mats are very very similar in design process and we're gonna look at that so this piece is a tarot bag and I'm actually not 100% finished with it. I think there's more that I want to do. Um, but what I made it for is I wanted, I wanted a, a bag that would hold two decks. So when I was working in pairs, but um, I kind of didn't make it wide enough to make a little stitch down the middle. So I'm not exactly sure, like the decks feel a little loosey goosey in there. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna solve that problem. But basically you can see that I just took a long piece of fabric and I stitched, so pretend this is like folded this way. I stitched the whole thing together and then I stitched this up and that cr created the pouch. Um, so let's take a look at the other side because this is a really easy way to digest how I do these bags. I mean the mats. So I started with a simple piece of fabric, can be anything you want. And then I started creating, so, okay. So I started with this simple piece of fabric and then I cut out another piece, can be anything, because that's the piece that you're gonna start creating your stitching on. So the piece that's like kind of hidden in between was just like a plain, it's hard to tell, but it was just like a, a plain piece of vintage fabric. Now it did have uh, some texture. In fact, you can see it here. Let's, let's remove the tarot card. So you can see, get a good look at, this was the fabric that I chose to actually be the top of this. This is what's underneath that. So, so this is one strip and this is another strip of the same size. And then eventually I just folded it over and I didn't decorate this side. So this side, um, I'm going to show you at the end of the video the materials because I have it all set up. <laughs> so I'll have to do that last. Okay, so you can see that I, so I purchased these strips off Etsy and there are different places, which I'll leave in the resources, where you can buy their scraps. So um, different, like this piece of um, more satiny, these two came from the same vendor. They're slightly different colors. It's kind of hard to tell on film, but they came from the same vendor. And they were just, they sell their scrap bags because maybe they're doing like something that's like, you know, they're selling spools or whatever. Um, and you can sometimes buy their scraps. For people like me who like to do slow stitching, that's exactly what they're for. Um, so I just do, I should probably show you. Well, no, we'll come back to that. Um, so I just have like this giant pile of scraps next to me. And I kind of pull some out that are gonna be in the color palette that I wanna do. Um, so the other thing that I try to do, so I pull things that I think I wanna work with. And I usually have a couple of pieces that are, that I, that I not, they're not gonna be the focal pieces, but they're gonna be kind of an anchoring piece, right? So for this one, I really liked this mauve. Let me see if I can give you a good look at it. It was kind of like a mauve type of floral um, that I bought from this vendor on Etsy. It's who sells like the long strips. Um, this was my favorite. And so I wanted to choose other pieces that were, that matched it, that were sort of similar. So I pulled out some blue and I pulled out, you know, I kind of go with a neutral thing um, and then add in color. So I pull out a bunch of like neutral type ribbons and scraps. So I've got like, you know, a little scrap of crochet. This is vintage. This is vintage. This is like vintage plus a layer, you know, so I, I pull out a, in general what I think I want to use. 
And then before I lay in the pieces that I want to show the most, I'll do some pieces that are kind of, I know are gonna be sort of in the textural background. Um, so I did like a bunch of this, this crochet, I literally got off Amazon. So I'll leave a link for that as well. This is vintage, um, but this like there's, there's kind of like workhorse um, eyelet and different ribbons and stuff that you can get that are really cheap and they kind of make up, you know, they make a piece fuller, but they're not going to be like your focal point. Um, so I just start hand stitching. You can see like, you can see really well here. I just do a running stitch with my, um, this stuff. It's like a, um, it's that embroidery floss, right? That you used to, your grandma used to have. It's the same thing. And I, you know, I separate the strands and stuff, but that's all it is. I buy like a big cream. I have some other colors, but I have a box of cream because cream is mostly what I use. So I have that and I, I just start stitching and then I start filling in. Um, so this one, you know, I probably, I think it like, it like visually kind of goes more this way, but I probably won't add, like I might add like a little, little interest or focal point here in the corner, like a little like flower or spray or leaves or something just to kind of like girl it up a bit. But you know, you can imagine what it would look like. No, it's kind of big, but here, let's take this like a little bit of, fa of, uh, something charming here in the corner. So I'll probably do that, but you know, sometimes I will do a, like a little piece and let it sit for a minute and then go back to it. Um, but yeah, so basically this tarot bag is, I do have a sewing machine that I actually just purchased. Um, and, it, but it's just a basic singer. Like it doesn't even have, like it was, you know, kind of, it was kind of not their cheapest, but by no means their most expensive. Cause all I really needed was like front back, you know, forward, backwards, and you know, maybe some zigzags. Like I like to keep it really simple um, because you know, I used to be really into the sewing machine and I had this whole like elaborate thing. And um, you know, I've kind of been, my mindset is really just the, the more simple I can make it the better. So you can see how I just started layering in different lines and adding colors that I liked and making it into textures that I liked. And then I stitched this closed and now, um, yeah, there it is. It's sort of a wrap style, but, um, I, you know, I don't think this is, this one's entirely done, but also, um, I didn't really measure right. So, <laughs> since I, uh, but you know, I'll get it next time. But anyway, so that was kind of my first little tarot bag wrap style that I did. Now you guys have all seen this probably on my, you know, other videos because this is my main tarot mat and this one is finished. Um, so let me start with the back. Like I created this back piece at the very end. So you can see about what size the, um, the original pieces underneath and then I added kind of some trim on the sides and then at this this thing I, I made at the end where I covered up all the stitching on the back and then and then just stitched it around the edges not with my sewing machine but with just by hand um, so you can kind of get a sense of the like the construction of it there but I really just took a plain piece of fabric um, that had some texture I think it was like a piece of French like kind of old French um, muslin type of fabric. And then I started just doing the layering that I showed you, you know, with the strips. Now what makes this one not so, like if you remember in the tarot bag, all the strips are pretty even, you know, like they're all going this way. So this one, I really wanted to do it where it was a little more wonky, you know, so you can see how I started out with the strips being, um, more even in the middle and then I started add, adding in like pieces that were different sizes like this one is only you know only goes up to here so some go all the way from top to bottom but others I just added in like this you can see I added that in more toward the end because I just wanted to add a little bit of like patches like here's a here's another patch um, but you can see the same technique is here where I layered all the different ribbons and then just stitch them. So to recap just a little bit, you're gonna start with a with a square or a rectangular, whatever size you wanna make it. 
something with a little bit texture, but you but you don't wanna pick something that you just love the look of because you're gonna cover it up, right? So you want the texture and feel there in case something peeks through. Like, I don't think any of it is peeking through, but um, sometimes it will. And so you wanna choose something that has, a, you know, maybe a little bit of discoloration or texture or something. Um, and then I think I started, I, I chose all my materials that I wanted to work with and I wanted to keep this in kind of a neutral palette. Um, so I started laying in things. The things that you lay down first are um, going to be the things that you don't care about as much. And they're going to be bigger pieces. So there are larger strips, like, like this piece underneath, it goes from here to here. So this is a really wide piece of lace and I stitched it down. And then I covered over it with different like fabrics and... Um, you know, whatever trim. So I kind of went into it thinking like, okay, so this piece of trim here, it only goes to here. And then I added a whole like extra section, but that's part of the personality of it. Like you don't want it to be perfect. You want it to be, you know, crazy. You want it to be like, well, at least I did for this piece. Like I wanted it to look a little more, you know, kind of like those G's bend quilts where it's just like you use kind of whatever scrap that you have on hand. The whole thing though is you have to use materials that you like the feel of and that you like the look of because your piece is only as good as the materials that go into it. Now sometimes that's not saying that all the materials have to be like expensive or vintage or whatever because some of them aren't. Like this piece right here, that was from a pair of pajamas that I had that I just liked. <laughs> I liked the print, I liked the colors, but I didn't wear the pajamas anymore, so I, I cut them off. So it doesn't have to be expensive or vintage or anything like that, but it has to be colors that you like, and it has to be, you have to like the feel of it, right? So you're not gonna add something to your work that is off-putting, right? Or you're trying to like shove a square peg into a round hole. You want it to be harmonious and you want it to be tactile and something that you like to touch. And if you do want that kind of wonky look, um, save all your shorter kind of pieces for the top layer. So remember, there's a whole bunch of under layers here that you can't even see because I stitched over them, but they're there and they do show. Um, I heard one time, um, the designer who designed the costumes for Gone with the Wind had designed um, all of the perfect underpinnings that weren't even going to show. Um, so the underwear that they wore was just as intricate and detailed as the costumes. And the, the quote was like, the people won't see it, but the actors will know. The actors will have a sense and a feel of how it felt to wear that kind of um, you know, vintage peignoir and vintage bloomers and all that stuff. So, so it's the same kind of approach here where you, some of these things might not necessarily show, but you know the, that they're there. So like this piece, this is the only part of it that really shows. There's a little bit down here that shows, but it has a nice feel to it and has little sprigs of color, you know? So all of these things are gonna come through to add interest to your finished piece. But the only skill involved is choosing pieces that you like, that have, you can even have like emotional significance for you. Um, and then you start with a base and then you just start adding strips to the base. The thing that you wanna keep in mind is um, it takes a long time. <laughs> you know, this is not a fast project. Like this probably took me, I probably listened to three audiobooks while I did this. Um, and I just stitched, stitched, scrapped, stitched, oh, a little more here and a little more there. And I just kept adding to it. So it's really kind of like, um, you don't know what it's gonna look like. In fact, you don't want to design these. The only thing I knew was that um, I wanted to do the Maiden Mother Crone, which I just cut out of fabric and then hand stitched on. And you can see I, I put a like little doily behind this one. That was all I knew. And I knew I wanted to do the Maid Maiden Mother Crone in this material, but that could have changed because sometimes once you get your composition, um, the things that you intend to do no longer make sense. So you have to be willing to let it you know, be different um, for whatever 
is emerging. But that's that's basically it. So I just start with, and it can be any old shape. That's why I'm not giving you like exact dimensions. And I can measure this for you if you want me to. But um, I literally, to, to pick the size, I did a Celtic cross. And I spread out the cards and I was like, okay, it's going to be that size, right? Because I wanted to be able to do a Celtic cross on this. Um, so that that was all I did for measurement. And I just cut out the original piece. I don't even think I cut it. I think I ripped the edges, right? So, um, so I just had the original piece and then I started sewing to it. So you, you start with the pieces that you like, maybe that are bigger to kind of create a base. Um, thinking that they're going to get covered up so don't get too attached but definitely if pieces of them show that's good you know you want to choose something that has like a visual quality to it and then you just start adding so now this one i started adding pieces this way but then i wanted to mix it up so i started adding like you know more chunky scraps and then i stitched like various laces around the edge to kind of create that like the edge of it you know, because I wanted it to have kind of like, you know, the bottom of a, a dress. Um, and then I sewed the, the piece onto the back. And that was it. Like, that's really kind of the creative headspace for these types of things. So can you do a running stitch? And do you have a little scrap bag? That's basically it. So let's take a look at a different one. Now, this one's a work in progress as well. In fact, I think it goes this way. I do have, there is a slight method to the madness. Like I do have a sense of top and bottom, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, but you can see, I have not covered this back piece yet. You know, so this is how it looks. Like it has all the like little tiny stitches, but you can see the piece that I chose for underneath was just kind of like a cream, um, you know, ecru type color, nothing special piece. Um, and I knew I was going to be adding fabrics over the top. So this one's a little bit different. This one's more like the tarot bag in the sense where most of the pieces are even. Now, I said I'm not finished. Like I added this little sewing machine here um, because I think I do want to go ahead and like I just kind of started here where I'm going to add in some more uneven pieces, like pieces that aren't so perfect from top to bottom. So now I'm at the stage where I, I, I thought I was going to keep it like even, but then I decided... No, I think I want to add a little bit of interest. So I've started it here, um, but I'm not done. You know, you can still see I've got my like strings and stuff that I haven't clipped. Um, but it's the same materials as in the other one, but just I kind of went with a slightly different color palette. Like I focused more on these like, um, you know, kind of burnt colors and this kind of vintage teal. And I kept it in that family, you know, so if it had kind of like a tealy green or a vintagey crew or peach, she was invited to the party, but everybody else like red or dark pink or no, they're not coming to this particular party. Um, so yeah, so you can see that I, you know, it has like new fabrics in there, um, has some vintage. These are scraps off Etsy. So I, like I said, I'll leave all my, um, I will leave all my links and resources down there for you. But, um, but yeah, so, and then I just added the edge. It's really just running stitch with so hand sewing pieces to a larger piece and then eventually I will choose a nice piece to go on the back so it looks finished and that it has a little bit of extra weight to it because it feels it doesn't feel flimsy but I would like it to be a little bit more substantial feeling um, but you can see that I used some of the um, scraps from the clothing and the you know the clothing that I purchased at a thrift store and then just like cut up and then this little piece right here i don't know if you can see it this was tied this was a piece of like you know like it's not ribbon it's just almost like like a piece of fabric that somebody tied around a tarot deck that they sent me so yeah you can save all that stuff and kind of keep it um in your little scrap bin and then this one i'm not sure i i'm settled on this being done um i added this kind of like thicker rickrack which i'm not sure i love you can always take stuff off I'm not quite there yet but um i tried to do like a little sculptural thing here and i'm not sure i love it so i don't know if i'll leave that or not but um but anyway you get the idea like you just get your plain piece and then you just start stitching but you keep it into a palette you want to kind of limit your palette so you might go all neutral or you might go all pastel or you know you could do mixing of opposite colors like i did here but you want to just keep it um 
contained like you don't unless you're doing like a crazy like every color in the rainbow because that can be really beautiful too um i think that the whole thing is don't worry too much about designing it just go with your feeling um there's a lot of like pressure i think to make things look a certain way but that's not the point of this type of stitching um i have a board on pinterest that i get inspiration from like different um, people who are like incredible. I mean, just their, their stitching is beyond like so beautiful. Um, so I get a lot of inspiration from them and then you just kind of take it on board in your heart and your soul. And then you let it mix around with your thoughts and ideas. And then you see what comes out, you know, like it's really, it's, it's quite impossible to copy somebody else when you're talking about this type of art, because there's just no way your materials are going to look different. Your, um, the way you hand stitch and you know, the, the time that you're willing to put into it is all varied. Um, and you want to just go with what you feel like, don't pressure yourself to make it any certain kind of way. Just enjoy the process. This whole thing, um, is about enjoying the process. So the last thing I wanted to show you, and I'm hand holding this because I just took my tripod down and moved it. But, um, I did want to show you, um, I, in another video, I showed this, um, journal cover unfinished and I and I have finished it so I wanted to show you that how that came out so um, this is for my ritual journal there's the back now the back you can see it was a moon situation and those that was from a tea towel that I purchased off Amazon it was like a, a set of three and one of the towels had this the moon cycle on it so I thought that would be a perfect base um, I was a little sad to cover it up, to be honest, but um, that's just the way it goes with this kind of stitching. Like if you start with something that you like too much at the bottom, uh, it's not always a good thing. So you want to just start with something you don't care about. But I did want to use this as like an overall shape, and that's what I ended up doing. So now you can see, I'll get a close up on that. I made like a little, um, I don't know what the proper term is, but I attached the ribbon and I created a little anchor point and then it's like a little bow. And then I had this little scrap from Etsy. So same process. Here, let me. Okay, so there she is flat. So the spine of the book goes right here and then this closes. So I just took the book out, but you can see the front and the back. I did a, like a little ribbon closure. And then what's so fun about this is I made this little pocket that on the flap, I made a pocket for pens and I just stitched that on, hand stitched. Um, and then I made, I have these um, rubber stamps that I like to use for my journaling here. And so I made it this little just muslin pocket that sticks in there. And so I always have my little um, rubber stamps with me so to check that I use in my journal. These kind of came in after the fact, but um, I do keep these in here as well, but <laughs> they don't get a fancy cover. But anyway, I just close it up and there you go. That's my, that's my journal cover. So the reason I wanted to show you that is so you can see, you don't have to stick to vertical lines. You know, that was just those two particular mats, but you can do anything like this one I made horizontal based on the, the pattern that was in the towel that I started um, so if you find something that has like an interesting pattern use that and start to embellish and stitch over that so that's what I did for this one so that's totally an option like you, do, you just start stitching but again you want to choose materials that you really enjoy so I would like to tell you guys that I'm super organized with my stitching basket, but as you can see, I literally just pulled it out. I keep it under my day bed and you can even see my like gross carpet that we've got in here. But, um, it, you know, I, I try not to keep it. I try to keep it tidy and sem semi organized, but part of the fun of doing this type of stitching is kind of going into your, supplies and pulling out something that you forgot was there. So I actually have two baskets. <laughs> Let me see if I can give you a shot of the other one. So there's the other one. And we'll get out I'll, I'll just bring those the things that are in there over into this frame so you can see it. But but the whole point is like you you keep it you could keep it in a big bag. 
Like this, for example. This is a Ziploc bag that I have all my, like, of various little scraps in, and there's really no rhyme or reason. And part of it for me is, like, I like the, the process of discovery. Like, this piece right here is really standing out to me, and she's, you know, saying to me that she wants to be used in something. <laughs> so I'll have to find a home for her. But, but anyway, you can see, like, it's a mixture of, like, some vintage, but I keep it in Ziploc bags, and I don't, like, get all up in my head about it. Um, this was literally a scrap bag that I bought off Etsy. Um, and you can see the some of the pieces that I incorporated into the last mat. Like here, some of them I tear in half again. Like this one, I think I tore in half. It was a little bit wider. Um, but yeah, I just purchased these. They have silk ribbons and chiffon ribbons and stuff and different vendors. Um, that, uh, you know, I'll just buy like a random bag that looks kind of cool and they'll send it. Now, you can also see grow grain ribbon in here. I can honestly tell you I probably never use that because it's just not really like what I gravitate toward. But I keep it because you never know. You do never know. So, um, now these, this is from a particular vendor as well. And she, it's this uh, vendor out of Denver and she buys like different, must be like different fabrics. I don't know if they're new or used or what, but I buy these ripped like that. So I just look at different colors that I like. Now this one's gray, but you don't want to um, sleep on plain things either because those add texture. Those add interest and texture. So I tend to think of these ribbons, these fabric strips as more statement the statement pieces that are going to go into my mats. Like this is such a bold look that, you know, um, I, I would have to choose a bunch of neutrals to make that really pop. But um, yeah, so you can see, like I just have like this basket of different strips and scraps that I bought from Etsy. And then I have more, these are more like folded pieces. So I, I purchased, like, these are, you know, different vintage scrap bags that I've gotten where I liked the colors and, you know, not everything is successful. Like, in, I don't know in what world I'll ever use that, but, you know, for now, I keep it around. Um, another, you know, so you can see my, I got like a handful of scrap bags that fit under the bed and I don't have like a full like blown studio or anything. Now, I also want to mention, like, don't sleep on these type of things either because so we bought these um parachute bedding that each thing came in its own linen bag and I'll tell you I was more excited about the linen bags than I was the actual sheets uh, because I know that I can pick this stitching and lay it flat and that will and take you know this label off and that will be the perfect base for a future mat so if anything comes through your house that is fabric Test the fabric and see if you like it. Like this is a perfect hand for stitching this kind of linen. So, you know, don't sleep on things that are that seem like they're for the garbage, right? So these, um, you know, parachute linen bags that my sheets came in are perfect. So I'm definitely going to use those. Um, there's also, so in, in, I used to have these pillows that were, um, on my couch but I, I just the, my style changed and my the look of my living room changed it's not quite as boho so I didn't want to just donate these because I like the fabric so much so I will probably actually take this apart and stitch on top of this and make it like I don't know cool and it could be a, a really cool tarot mat I think so you gotta kind of like have your radar uh activated for some of this stuff but like this is a shirt that I had in war for a long time, but it just doesn't, not, it's not really my style. Like this kind of Western look just is a little bit too busy. Um, but I love the fabric. I mean, my goodness, look at these like gorgeous roses, but it was just a little bit too much on the body, but it's going to be great because I'm going to cut this thing up and make strips out of it. So you'll get that texture and that color, um, that I love so much here, but you know, it's the, the shirt has lived, it's had its life as a garment and now it's going to be something else. Same thing with this. I, I almost donated this to the Goodwill 
And I was kind of sad about it because I thought, oh, I just really love these colors. And, but the garment is too small for me. It doesn't fit anymore and it's sort of falling apart. Like it's kind of old. So perfect, you know, like the this little stretchy collar is gonna be great stitched. Now this is, obviously it's gonna be something that has like bold color, which is not something I've been gravitating toward lately, but you can see how it's just scraps, right? Like it's just, that's the best part about it is it's just little scraps. Um, so I'm a little embarrassed because my bins are so messy. But anyway, you can just see like it's fabric that I can cut into strips or I can make it, you know, the, um, the backing. And then the last thing I'll show you in this super long video is just in this bag here, I keep more substantial fabrics and I purchased, okay, so fabric like this kind of fabric that you get for quilting is expensive you know like it can be really expensive like I don't know 10 bucks a yard or more um but thrift clothes are really cheap um if you go to thread up and buy like sometimes they have these sales where the the clothes that they can't sell um like for regular they will put into like what's their sale area that is a name I can't remember the name but I purchased a bunch of those things because I liked the fabrics and then I cut them up. So I really paid like $3 for a, a garment in which I liked the fabric and then I cut the, I cut the garment up. Um, so that's a great way to get your hands on some cheaper materials. All of these things are from garments, like not that, but this was a skirt. Like it was kind of this like short BB skirt, which in a million years I'm, I would never wear because I'm 54, but see, you can see how short the skirt was, but the fabric itself is a delight, you know, like it was just so nice. So don't, don't sleep on um, buying clothes at a thrift store or whatever, because you like the fabric because you can cut them up. So that's basically it, you guys. Like I just... Um, you know, you gravitate towards materials that speak to you. I'll leave my resources where I get all my little strips and then start small. Make Just start with a mat and start stitching and you can lay out the pieces and see what you like. Uh, if you don't like something, you can clip it off. Um, oh, this is a another one of those Amazon towels and I really liked this butterfly so I want to do something with that but you know don't overthink it just use it as part of your like meditation all you need is a needle and some of the like I would say an embroidery needle and some of those like embroidery flosses and you just start you start stitching it you don't have to have anything fancy you don't even have to have a sewing machine um you just have to have a little bit of supplies and that's it. You just start going. And don't get frustrated if, if you make mistakes because mistakes are the best part of, you know, creating some of these things. These are all of Etsy. This date has absolutely no significance. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's basically it. So there it is, all of my stitching. And I have to say, I have gotten rid of a lot of stuff over time. I, I've lived a kind of a transient lifestyle where I, I counted once. I've moved like 18 times over the past, I don't know, 20 years or so, which doesn't sound like that much, but it was really a lot. And every time you move, um, you go through your things and you get rid of things and give away things. And so I think that's one of the downsides of being sort of, you know, where you're hopping from place to place and not staying in one place for very long is you just don't have the luxury of being able to, you know, really amass things that you can use for your art. So I keep it pretty lean and mean, but it's for now, it's, it's really working and um, I'm enjoying where I'm at with it. And I hope that you enjoyed this too. And if you ever have any questions about your own stitching or, um, you know, um, you want a specific question about, I don't know, anything regarding stitching or anything at all, you can just go to my website, christineroselle.com, and there's a contact form and you can send me a contact or you could even leave a comment. I read all my comments. So um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this and thank you so much for being a part of my channel. It means so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.